Praise the Most High God, my brothers and sisters, people of God. I come before you this day, February the 25th, 2018, with a word of encouragement. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Brothers and sisters, we're living in dark times. We're living in very dark times. And, you know, I wanted to come before you, and I won't be before you long this day, but I wanted to share with you um, uh, a few things uh, that, that this has been going on in my life. And I'm pretty sure not just my life, but we're being attacked as a whole, as the body, as the fabric. Uh, um, I'm pretty sure that there's somebody out there who's being attacked. Uh, well, we know that the enemy has devised many weapons against us in this hour. But glory be to God. Father said, no weapons that are formed against us shall prosper. Neither shall any tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment. God shall condemn. And this is the heritage of the saints. Let me correct that. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Glory be to God. Brothers and sisters, we're living in very, very, very trying times. You know, um, I want to tell y'all, uh, share a little uh, testimony about Friday. My mother came to pick me up from work. And uh, that day before she had came up to my job. And my office is the last window. I'm sorry, the last office. How can I put this? It's the window on the end of the building. So when my mother parked the car, uh, basically in front of my window, and so uh, the day before, which was that Thursday, she said, Thursday the 22nd, she said that she saw uh, through another window, probably to the right of my office window, because my office window, the way she was parked was facing the left, towards the left. Uh, she saw another worker in the building and she saw a lady and she saw uh, another one of my bosses and she saw a little girl, she said, that had barrettes and she was playing you know, picking up stuff on his desk and messing with things like that. And, I, you know, I told her I didn't know of any little girl. I didn't see any little girl. So I thought, okay, I would ask my boss. And so uh, Friday when she came to pick me up, she said that she saw another little girl. But guess what? She wasn't in the other man's office. She was in my office, she said. Um, how my office is in front of my window I have a book bookcase but it's it's like a uh, it's a it's a fairly uh, high bookcase and it came to the mid part of my window not covering up the whole window but it just came midway and so um, if somebody was standing in the window in front of the bookcase you could still see the upper uh, body but anyway in caddy corner to that I have another tall bookcase it's a more slender bookcase and it's it's up against my wall catty corner in my office and um this was after five o'clock my mother i got off at five but you know i stayed a little longer because i was finishing up some things so there was me and probably two other nurses in the building everybody else was gone home so uh i walked away from my desk and went to the copier uh to fax a couple of things but I wasn't away from my desk that long I was generally in my office doing some things but anyway to make a long story short she she said that she saw a little colored girl I don't want to say colored forgive me she saw a african-american girl uh, looked like she said about six or seven years old and but her hair was pulled up in a ponytail that she was messing with my um, uh, bookcase she was getting some things off of my bookcase moving things around you know like a normal child would she said uh i'm looking like this y'all can see i'm looking baffled because i'm telling her there's not a little girl in my office nor should there be a little girl in my office there was no other people in the building besides me and two other nurses so i told her i asked her again are you sure you saw someone in my office she said yes she said, I said, are you sure it wasn't me? She's like, no, I know the difference between an adult and me and a child. She said, this was a child. This was a little girl and her hair was pulled up in a ponytail. Now, y'all, I've been getting attacked all week long <clears throat> uh, on my job. The enemy has been forming weapons against me and people have been coming up against me and the spirit of offense 
as well as other spirits is roaming up and through that office building. So this leads me to my next discovery that uh, this little girl that's in my office is not really a little girl. That is a demonic spirit, okay? Because I've been in a brain fog in my office. I have papers scattered on my desk. I can't really get focused to get anything done. And I'm, my blood pressure has been up and I've been agitated and irritated having to go home uh, and from the and, and from the job site having to go to the ER because my blood pressure was so high uh, a couple of weeks back. But to make a long story short, brothers and sisters, I know I'm not the only one that the enemy is coming up against. Uh, uh, us in this hour in this season attacking us but glory to God he said no weapons that are formed against us shall prosper glory be to God you know there's a demon roaming around that building and in my office possibly I didn't have peace so uh for the the devil to come in dressed up uh disguised as a little girl you know the devil is a liar and the father of him she was not a little girl that my mother saw that is a demon there is demonic activity going on in that office building and especially in my office like i said the peace of god was not upon me and have not been upon me we have the holy spirit dwelling in us and i've been knowing already that i've been uneasy i've anointed the office building <clears throat> and prayed and walked through uh on more than one time so it's time to do it again because you know we have a lot of people that come in and out and we know that uh those little demons and, and and things like that like to attach themselves to people and sometimes they stay so glory be to god i just wanted to tell y'all what i've been up against and experiencing in this time uh glory be to god we know that many things uh, have been going on uh billy graham went home to be with our lord and our savior glory be to god his work was finished so, you know, uh, prophecies, there's a lot of prophecies out there where people that had dreams some years uh, in times past that after Billy Graham passed away, that the Lord showed them the rapture, that he was coming to take us out of here because things are going to get very, very bad. Well, brothers and sisters, I just come before you and I'm telling you, hold on. There are many distractions that are going on right now that the enemy is trying to keep our focus and our attention off of God. But glory be to God, we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because he's coming sooner than we all think. Sooner than we all think. And you know, I wanted to share a testimony uh, with y'all about last night. I was at Verizon, Verizon Wireless, and the young man uh, that was helping me, um, you know, he, the Holy Spirit before I left, prompted me to tell him that Jesus loves him and he said that he didn't know that Jesus loved him he, he I said well do you believe in God and he said he really didn't know what he believed well glory be to God I told him now is the time that Jesus did in fact die and he must accept him and receive him as Lord and Savior because he won't be able to enter into the kingdom and that there is in fact an afterlife there is an eternity whether it be heaven or whether it be hell but there is an eternity and jesus calls us to choose choose ye this day whom you will serve now the enemy has it's not just him but it's many out there that are like him and i told him i challenge you to go before god and ask god if you, I don't know who you are and I don't even know if you're real, but if you are real, reveal yourself to me. And that I told him that God will definitely honor that prayer and he will show himself to him. Glory be to God, because it wasn't by chance or by fault that I was in there because I went to another Verizon Wireless and lo and behold, they didn't have what we needed. So we ended up over there. So brothers and sisters, you know what that means. That means God had a work for me to do. And as I shared with him, the young man, I told him that I would was sent over there for him because you know we're all going to be without excuse and as the holy spirit led the holy spirit spoke through me i did not quench the spirit and the young man stated that he was starting to be afraid and i told him don't be afraid you don't have anything to be afraid of if you have jesus christ once you get him and you get an understanding and you receive him as lord and savior you don't have anything to be afraid of because see we know that god our father is stored up wrath for the inhabitants of the earth those who are, who are evil those who are wicked but he is spared the righteous glory be to god so i told him that while he now has yet 
uh, breath is still in his body, he has a chance to come to Jesus. Glory be to God. So uh, let's pray for that young man that he receives Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And let's thank God that a seed has been planted because that's a soul. One plants and one will water and God will give the increase. Glory be to God. That's been going. That's what's been going on with me, brothers and sisters. Um, uh, the enemy has been trying to take a take a toll uh, on my body with my health and things like that. But glory be to God. And sometimes, and I'm not gonna lie, I, I I've been growing weary and 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 crying out to our Father and wanting to go home, probably sooner than He wants me to, you know. But glory be to God. I just have to lean on Jesus to continue to leave on him, lean on him because he is who gives me strength. He is who gives us all strength to endure and we must endure to the end. Glory be to God. Because if we endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And all who call upon the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, shall be saved. So glory be to God, brothers and sisters, we have work to do. I know a lot of us are, are longing to go home and be with our Lord and Savior, but he said we still have work to, work to do. Why? Because we still have breath in our body. So while we have breath in our body, he calls us to be to do the work of an evangelist. Glory be to God. We must go and do the work of an evangelist and evangelize. Preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel must go out unto the nations, to all nations, and then shall the end come. Glory be to God. We have a lot of work to do. We know that the gospel has went out and it has gone out and we know that all are going to be without excuse. But while we're still here, the gospel must still go forth. The word of God must continue to go forth because it hasn't reached everybody. Glory be to God. Because I know that whoever the Holy Spirit prompts you and leads you to share the gospel with, that means there's somebody else. It's still people coming in. Remember, Jesus said that, that he's got to bring others in. It's a lot of other sheep that's got to come in before we go home. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So no matter how bad things are looking and no matter how bad things uh, get, Glory be to God. There are souls out there that are in danger of hellfire. Glory be to God. And even worse, the lake of fire. So we have, let's get on our post, brothers and sisters. Let's stop being distracted. Let's stop worrying about what he's doing over here, what she's doing, or, or even uh, asking God to uh, take us home because that's being selfish. Because while you want to go home, there's a soul out there that's lost. There's a soul out there that is dying. There's a soul out there that is going to the lake of fire, the second death. Glory be to God. So let's not be selfish. Let's be selfless and continue to deny ourselves and take up our cross and come after Jesus daily. Glory be to God. And while we're coming after him, let's gather some souls up. Let's gather some souls up because, you know, we know, we also know that uh, Jesus has told us that the harvest is, is, is almost here. He's going to tell them, gather the wheat into my barns. Glory be to God. And that's, that's been in my heart and in my spirit as well. The wheat and the tares, the parable about the wheat and the tares. Let's get right, church, and let's go home. But in the meantime, though we're longing to go home, there are souls out there that don't even know about our Lord and Savior Jesus. They may have heard about him, but yet they don't believe. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So Jesus calls us to walk in newness of life and testify and, and do the things that he would do while he was still here on this earth, walking the earth. Glory be to God. We know that he's here in spirit because he sent us the comforter, the Holy Spirit. But we are to carry out the work. Glory be to God, brothers and sisters. Let's not be slothful. Let's not grow weary. We got work to do. There are souls dying. And we know that sudden destruction is soon to come. So let's hide ourselves in Jesus. And before we get on the ark, glory be to God, let's keep continuing to snatch those souls from, <laughs> from going into the pit. Glory be to God. So I love you, brothers and sisters. I love you. Please pray my strength in the Lord. Pray my strength in the Lord because I get tired too. So I'll continue to lift all of us up. Glory be to God. And um, soon we'll be going home. Jesus loves you. Tamara does too. Shalom.